stories of mine, uh, written originally in English, translated into, uh, sorry, originally in Tamil and translated into English by my sister, Usha Narasamy. She's in London. Uh, she's a further education teacher. Um, she started in uh, 2009, uh, just out of interest, uh, just one short story. And then uh, she got stuck later, she didn't do, and I had to push over, over the back of her and you know, got it done. And then um, these short stories, 15 out of the seven short, 17 short stories are uh, Singapore based. Singapore, Singapore issues, Singapore people, and mainly because I live here, I've been living here for 26 years, and uh, this is where I belong. Uh, this is where I live, and so um, writing about uh, life in Singapore, about people in Singapore, is easier for me. This writer, uh, she has you now uh, written over 27 books, and uh, I would like to tell a little story about how I got to know about her and about this book. So one day I received this email, you know, Kitab's Gmail box that, uh, you know, there's this book, and she had already tied up with a publisher in India. And she wanted to see if uh, we could do the Singapore edition, you know. And uh, and she had sent some sample chapters and all that. And interestingly, every story had uh, an illustration, you know, going with it. So I found that very interesting. And the stories were very simply told. Set in Singapore, you know, some stories happen on the on the train. Some stories happen in the household. Some stories happen in the wet markets. You know, all kinds of uh, setting that we are familiar with in Singapore. And, and the simplicity of the stories really struck me. And I, then I proposed to her that why don't we do it, you know, full scale, uh, the Kitab's brand. And luckily she agreed, and uh, that's how we proceed. So this sort of becomes uh, Kitab's, one of Kitab's first, uh, you know, translated uh, literature uh, series. And uh, those of you who, who follow Kitab might also know that we have bought, you know, Isa Kamari's. Uh, <coughs> One of his novels, Intercession, and we are translating it into uh, Hindi and Urdu. So, uh, Kitab is committed to uh, doing a lot of translations you know, from one Asian language to another Asian language. And I believe that uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of richness in the region uh, among the writers. You know, we don't know what is happening in Cambodia or Myanmar or Thailand in terms of literary writing, right? Because not much of the fiction is translated, especially in other Asian languages. English. So we try to bridge the gap, and so this is like uh, one effort to do it. So that's why this book is very special to me, and I look forward to work with more young writers and seasoned writers you know, who are sitting here and who are in Singapore or other places. Uh, so that's the journey we intend to uh, take onwards. You know uh, what's going on in India at the moment? Uh, there's a lot of resentment among. Uh, writers and filmmakers and publishers about the, the rise of tide and tolerance that we are seeing in the country. Uh, it's a very important turn of uh, turn of events in India. Those of you who have been following the news stories, you know, you've might have seen uh, how some intellectuals have been murdered and uh, one of them was murdered because based on some rumor of kind of things. So I was recently in India and I was Traveling through cities, I, I was in Delhi, in Bangalore, then uh, Mumbai, and everywhere. And before that, I was in uh, Rajasthan. And everywhere, everybody was talking only about what was happening in the very sad sense. So, and then this book, which is uh, in solidarity with those writers, and dedicated to the only writer of India. Now, uh, the story of Kafka and Ajodhya, I wrote a uh, couple of years back. And uh, when there was this time when the Supreme Court was going to give a judgment on, the, uh, on this disputed structure, which is, it was a mosque, then it was considered to be the birthplace of law drama. And there was a lot of politics around the it led to uh, writing and all that. So it was a, it has been a very controversial thing in, in Indian contemporary history. So I was, once I was coming from Germany, you know, I was traveling and I was sitting in the airport and I thought, that what if Kafka travels to India? <laughs> <laughs> and he sees all the drama around this, uh, around this uh, structure. 
So that led to this story, which I am very happy to have. I mean, I have not written very many stories. Uh, before this, I had a collection called the Singapore Decalogue, which was uh, was a collection of ten stories set in Singapore about immigrant. But this one has this Kafka Jodhya and some other surreal stories. Some of them are set in India, some of them are set here. Uh, some stories are realistic, so there are in total seven stories. But there are three or four stories in this collection which uh, I feel very satisfied with. I, I, I don't count myself as worthy of anything, but uh, uh, the kind of literary heroes I follow, you know, the, the check of the mantras of the world, I, I try to be in India's own in this space. And when I reread my stories you know, after uh, six or seven years, you can tell, right? <laughs> so, uh, because uh, when I write the story and I read it, Immediately, you know, I'm not very sure you know, how or how bad it is, but uh, time flows and you go back to the story and you see, you know, if it still reads like good stuff, you know, and you don't feel guilty of everything, then probably it's okay. So that was my test, and the stories I've selected for this collection are uh, sort of those kind of stories that I think they're okay. The rest I need to be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, uh, I didn't know this fact that the story of Metamorphosis by Kafka, which is one of his most famous works, was written exactly 100 years ago. So when the book came out in October, you know, uh, came out of the press, it was exactly 100 years ago when Metamorphosis was written. And this, the structure of the story is like Metamorphosis. So Kafka travels with the, with the bug in the suitcase, you know, this famous bug. And I have not clarified what bug that is. You know, So that's that, and then uh, it's a very funny story actually. It's, it's, it's fun. And you also see how the media behaves in India, especially the television media. Uh, so the climax is very interesting. Yes, I want to say that I appreciate you're doing something like this because I think really, you know, just freedom of thought, especially intellectual and among writers in India, is really at risk right now. Yeah, so, yeah, I totally agree with you. Like I told you, uh, I was traveling in India and everybody was talking about these things. Ordinary people, you know, Hindus, Muslims, yeah, everybody is uh, so scared now and they are so uh, sort of, uh, uh, some people are sort of in a self-censoring mode, you know, should I write this piece, should I not write this piece? So one could never imagine these kind of things uh, one and a half years back in India. But I could see it coming, you know, I, I used to write a blog called Dreaming and uh, the day of the current Prime Minister was elected, I stopped writing a blog. And, uh, the last blog I wrote was called uh, The Day the Idea of the Entire. You can go and read that blog. And since then, I have not written any blogs. And this story was written five, six years ago, and it was it, it, it is a satirical take on the situation. I mean, the issue could be settled, but is the politicization around it, which is the problem? And some, some people taking advantage of it and inciting one community against another and the rest of But the good thing is, people in India are very interested to see they are fighting back. They are fighting back and they will not allow the character of India to change. That much faith I have I've got now since I returned from India. When I went there, I didn't have that faith. But after coming back, I can see now that people are fighting back. They will not give it up. Thank goodness.